Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we've got a very special episode in store as I'll be joined by CGB or Covered Go Blue as you might know him from YouTube as we'll be playing a bunch of infinite combo jank decks against each other to see which one comes out on top in celebration of his jank week for reaching 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. So make sure to check out his perspective of the battles as well as he'll thoroughly explain the various combo decks he's bringing to the table. But uh, from my end, we're playing two different combo decks. One is called the Rise and Fall, the other Salvager combo. Let me quickly go over them. Rise and Fall is a black-white enchantment deck with the combo of Archon of Falling Stars plus Kaya's Ghost Form. So Archon of Falling Stars says, when it dies, you can return an enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Kaya's Ghost Form is an aura that can enchant a creature or planeswalker. And when the enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, you can return that card to the battlefield under your control. Now, if the Archon dies with Kaya's Ghost Form enchanted, then you have the option of bringing back the Archon from the graveyard. And then with the trigger from the Archon, you can even get back the Kaya's Ghost Form that just entered the the graveyard from the battlefield so you can bring both back from the graveyard essentially now with these two in place we need a sacrifice engine so we can sacrifice archon and kind of keep looping this and that's where woe strider comes in which can sacrifice creatures at instant speed without any cost and we also get to scry one now we still need a way to actually win the game and that's where a cruel celebrant comes in handy whenever a cruel celebrant or another creature or planeswalker you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one life so with this four card combo was strider celebrant and then an archon enchanted with kaya's ghost form we can drain the opponent out and essentially deal infinite damage then there's another part to this combo if we don't have cruel celebrant in play yet but have hateful eidolon in play instead then we can also draw infinite cards because whenever an enchanted creature dies we can draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it so with the ghost form and archon we can draw infinite cards and we also get infinite scries with the woe strider and then once we draw into the cruel celebrant we can win the game so let's take a look at the rest of the deck we've already mentioned hateful eidolon which can be part of the combo but is also just a great individual card in this deck as so we've got a bunch of these enchantment removal spells like Mars grasp and deadweight that can kill an opposing creature and with the Eidolon we also get to draw a card. We've got our two copies of Kaya's Ghost Form. And then to go with all these cheap auras, we also have the full playset of Helid's Pilgrim that can search those up, can search for the missing combo piece if we need a Kaya's Ghost Form, and also gives us a body that we can enchant with the Ghost Form, which is sometimes a play we make, just put the Ghost Form on a Pilgrim, sacrifice it to the Ghost Rider or some other effect, and then we get the trigger from the Pilgrim entering the battlefield once again to maybe search up an additional aura, maybe also draw a card with the Eidolon in play, so just makes for a nice uh, engine in this deck as well. We've got our four copies of Woe Strider, and then at four mana we've got the full playset of a Rankel, Master of Pranks, which also has a lot of synergy in this deck since we've got so much sacrifice fodder between the GOAT tokens and the Heliod's Pilgrim that we can easily make the opponent sacrifice a creature as well without uh, it costing us too much. It can also help us draw cards to assemble the combo, can make the opponent discard, and sometimes we actively want to sacrifice our own creatures if we want to draw additional cards with the Hateful Eidolon. Then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Gravebreaker Lamia as a 4-4 lifelinking enchantment creature that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a card and put it into our graveyard. So it can potentially find Woe Strider so we can escape it as a nice value play. Sometimes we want to put a copy of Archon of Falling Stars or Kaya's Ghost Form in the graveyard which works quite nicely with our next card which is Rise to Glory which lets us choose one or both between returning target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and returning target aura card from our graveyard to the battlefield field so it can just be a nice value card in general in this deck but also can potentially help us get an Archon back from the graveyard that we put there with the Gravebreak Alamia, as well as a copy of Kaya's Ghost Form, and we can then enchant the Archon with the Kaya's Ghost Form that we returned at the same time. So this can potentially help us assemble the main engine of the combo with just one card, which is quite useful as well. And then in the mana base we also have two copies of Castle Lochthwain to draw additional cards, and we've got plenty of life gain to offset the life loss from the castle, and then six planes, eight swamps for Godless Shrine and four temples of silence so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and uh, interesting hand two lands is not much but i do like eidolon plus ghost form i'm actually leaning mulligan on this one all right this is a bit better and then i could bottom the archon 
since I can find it with the lime, I put it in the graveyard in case we find a way to get it back from the graveyard. Or I could just keep it, because technically if we get up to 6 mana, I can uh, get infinite scries with the West Rider and Arkan. And bottom the Limea. Yeah. I guess we'll do that. All right, time for a Wush Rider. Could sack the goat just to hit our land drop here, which does seem important. So a CGB is ramping nicely. Another gross barrel. Alright, that's a lot of mana. Hateful Eidolon. Not amazing. I could technically play it, ghost form it, and then dead weight it just to draw a bunch of cards. Although then we won't have the Ghost Form to go with Arkan, and I'll need a way to find it back. It might honestly be okay. Because I don't know how good this Dead Weight is going to be otherwise. So at least we hit our land drop for the turn. Another Wolf of Haven. And Incubation Druids. Alright, so now we regret uh, using that dead weight a little bit. So I could sign the Eidolon to maybe hit my land drop for the Lamia. But if we find the Myers Grasp, I'll regret it. Alright, land is still fine. I guess we can try the attack. And then what do I put in the graveyards? We already have Gaia's Ghost Form there. So could put a Wost Rider in case we want to escape it. I have only two other cards in graveyards. I can put Arkan there in case we find a way to reanimate it next turn. Or I can just put like a Myers Grasp in there. I think I'll go for Arkan. That way if um, we find our Rise to Glory, we can cast it next turn with Arkan and Chaos Ghost Form already in the graveyard. Uh oh, Nyx Boom Ancient. All right, that's bad news. So this incubation druid makes a lot of mana. All right, I guess I'll just cast my Archon now. And then, uh, yeah, I need to find a Rise to Glory. Another Kaios Ghost Form would be good. He leads Pilgrim to find Kaios Ghost Form. Because with the Hateful Eidolon in play, if we assemble the loop, we can draw infinite cards until we find Cruel Celebrant to win the game. Well, that's a lot of mana. <laughs> Hydroid Crisis for X equals 25. We might not get another turn. Fair of Wishes can get something out of the sideboard. And High Alerts means uh, infinite mana with Incubation Druid essentially. As you get to untap a creature for 4 mana, but uh, can make quite a bit more than 4 mana with Incubation Druid. So 
second fail wishes. Can get a win condition. And it's going to be a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. 32 cards left in library. So it's time for a big Hydroid to win the game. So we've got 16 cards remaining. And there we go. And next up we've got the Salvager combo, which is another pretty convoluted combo deck involving Nylia keen Eyed to make creature spells we cast cost one less, and Ugin the Ineffable to make colorless spells we cast cost two less to cast. So if we have both in play we can play Salvager of Ruin for zero mana. Salvager of Ruin, a three mana two one construct that says sacrifice a Salvager, choose target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, and then return it to your hand. So we first need to kickstart the first Salvager of Ruin by having something leave the battlefield and end up in our graveyard so we can return it with the Salvager. But then the second copy of Salvager of Ruin can be sacrificed to return the original Salvager of Ruin and then we can replay that for free, getting back the second Salvager of Ruin and then we can endlessly keep looping those, sacrificing them forever. And then we still need a win condition to leverage that entire loop. And once again we're going to rely on Cruel Celebrant to drain the opponent out. Then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got some ramp in the form of Paradise Druid and Wolf Willow Haven, as well as the full playset of Altar of the Pantheon, which all add green devotion to potentially turn Nylea into a creature. The Altar also gains a bit of life with Nylea in play. We've got Bond of Flourishing to gain life and dig deeper towards our various combo pieces, can help find Ugin, Nylea, and some of our ramp cards, as well as the Salvagers. And then we also have two copies of Golden Egg. The reason this is in the deck is that it synergizes quite nicely with Ugin as a free spell we can cast with Ugin in play to draw a card. But also importantly, it's a way to potentially kickstart the first Salvager of Ruin, since we do need a permanent that will easily end up in our graveyard, so we can use the first Salvager of Ruin to get it back. And in this case, we can just pay one mana to sag the Golden Egg to add one mana, so we can essentially do it for free, and then use a Salvager to get back the Egg, and then the second Salvager can get back the first Salvager, and we can start comboing. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is Shared Summons, which can help search our library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them and put them into our hands. So we can't search up two copies of Salvager of Ruin, sadly, but we can search up one Salvager plus one Nylea, perhaps, or a Salvager and a Cruel Celebrant. So it can help us find the missing combo pieces. And then Ugin is by far the best card in the deck because it gives us a board presence with the plus, gives us some removal with the minus, otherwise our deck doesn't really interact. And then of course is also part of the combo. And then looking at our mana base, got a couple different basics that we can search up with Fable Passage, which is another way to potentially kickstart the combo with a Salvager of Ruin as a permanent that ends up in our graveyard that we can return. And then we've got some temples to help us cry, which can also help assemble the combo and some shock lands to go with them. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and uh, yeah, I've got a reasonable looking hand. Shared summons can find a salvager plus a cruel celebrant perhaps. And then we're still looking for an Ugin. Alsaid gets in for one. Second Alsaid. Alright, there's our Celebrants. So four mana this turn can go Altar plus Celebrants to block these Alsades. Banthic Biomancer. So this must be the Banthic Biomancer infinite damage uh, combo with Heliods and the Buccaneer. We're pretty close to having enough devotion for Nylea to become a creature. How about we start with the Bond of Flourishing here. See if we can maybe find an Ugin. 
I guess Paradise Druid gives us more devotion for Nylea, so it could be a good thing. But for now, probably still play Altar. The ferry, sure. I am not going to sit this one out. It's gonna bounce one of the altars. And then I guess we'll just redevelop our mana. If I go Nylea plus Paradise Druids. I'm still gonna be one devotion short. But I guess I could gain one from the altar, so that's kind of nice. Alright, sure. So yeah, all we're missing now is Ugin, and then I guess a second Salvager, since Shared Summons can only get one of them. No, I am not making this up as I go. Another Haven can turn on Nylea, which could be useful. Although I can also do it with Altar, and then I'll still have the mana to cast Shared Summons. Although I have to play it during my own turn because of the Fairy. Let's do this now. And then get Salvager plus maybe a backup Cruel Celebrants. Sure. And then Nylea can go after Teferi, I guess. One Alsaid might get sacrificed for the greater good. Another Biomancer joins the fun. So I guess now I want to sink some mana into Nylea to help us dig for the missing combo pieces. Send Nylea to Ferry. And then I can double activate Nylea. I'll keep the Salvager in hand in case there's some removal waiting for us. Alright, so we'll pass. So we have been lucky to dodge Heliot so far. Let's try this. End of turn, activate Nylea. And gain some life off Altar, and there's Ugin, perfect. So we'll keep that. And then... Do want to be careful that it doesn't randomly die to an unblockable creature here. So I don't think I want to minus. I'm just going to plus with it. We'll uh, attack the fairy first. Can probably send a Paradise Roots to at this point. Got plenty of green devotion. And 
we might see Teferi just uh, bite the dust here. Ooh, time wipe. All right. Fair enough. So that happens. Still have enough devotion for Nylia, luckily. And we've got our second Cruel Celebrant in hand to still pull off the combo. And then I think I just pass. Don't want to risk losing the second Celebrant. So shared summons would do it, and finding another salvager would do it. Ooh, fires of invention. So we'll gain some life here. Fable passage can be a way to potentially enable the salvager of ruin. I don't know if I care about the fires, so don't know if I need to kill it with Ugin at this point. I'll just activate Nylia. Find another Nylia. Another Ugin, I guess that doesn't hurt. And then I'll just plus. And get in with Nylia. And then end of turn I can activate once again. Ooh, Drawn from Dreams, that's a good one. It's a fairy, sure. You show remorse. I'll show restraint. Hey. Bounces Nylia, I guess we'll activate a response. More Ugins. Maybe I should play it safe and kill this uh, Benthic Biomancer and then just replay Nylia for now. There's Heliots. Uh oh, there's Buccaneer. Well, glad we killed that Biomancer. Hopefully, there's not another one. The Jeskai combo is also not technically an infinite combo. So, if I gain enough life, then uh, we could survive depending on how many cards are left in CGB's library. Buccaneer goes after Ugin. And then can use the ability to discard cards. Discards a time wipe. So we've got a 4-6 Buccaneer, can activate once again. Get to use the new emote. Alright, so we could kill the Buccaneer, but we'll just block with uh, Nylia here to be nice.
All right, let's gain one more life. Now I really want to find this last Salvager of Ruin. So do I keep digging for Salvager? I think I do. Or I guess I can plus here. On the flourishing graveyards. Yeah, I guess we're too late now. So yeah, I could attack for lethal, but that's kind of lame. So I guess we'll just keep digging. Find a paradise druid, and we'll uh, we'll stay back. Uh oh, there's a Biomancer, so combo assembled, although there's only 32 cards left, and we're at 36. So the way the combo works, give Buccaneer lifelink, activate Buccaneer, and then you can uh, place the counters on the Benthic Biomancer using Heliod. Benthic Biomancer gets to draw and discards, which also triggers the Buccaneer. So you get to deal a lot of damage, but you do eventually run out of cards in library. So there's not going to be enough damage to kill us. But we get to see the combo in action. Alright, so now that we get our shared summons back, we should be able to pull off the combo now. So we can shared summons for our last Salvager of Ruin. Guess we'll get an extra Nylea. Play Cruel Celebrants. Then I do need to kill something so I can... Uh, use my Salvager of Ruin to begin with. So I'll just minus on Paradise Druid, sure. CGB is tapped out. Play Salvager of Ruin. Sacrifice it, getting back Paradise Druid that just died. Play an extra Salvager of Ruin. And now we can start comboing. This is gonna take a second. Alright, we're reaching the final stretch. Final iteration. GG's. Alright, so our Salvager combo managed to beat the Heliot infinite damage combo. Not quite infinite, so yeah. Get to see here the limitation of the Jeskai combo not being able to deal quite enough damage after running out of cards in library. Alright, and now for the third and final game we'll do a rematch between the Black White Enchantment deck and the Jeskai combo deck. Fine opening hand. Don't have a ton of our combo pieces, but uh, 
this deck can also potentially play fine as a more mid rangey value deck with the Eidolon. And then the Pilgrim has quite a bit of flexibility, can get a removal spell, can get the Kaya's Ghost Form to help us combo. Myers Grasp is a pretty good draw. So for now, I'm not sure what to get with the Helix Pilgrim, so I'll just play the Strider on curve. And then Strider into Rankle is also a better curve, as we can potentially sag the Goat to Rankle's ability. Alright, we almost have all the pieces, we're missing the Archon at this point. So, don't want to necessarily overextend into a sweeper. So how about we play Helid's Pilgrim and get a Kaios Ghost Form. And then I can put the Kaios Ghost Form on the Pilgrim, so if it dies, we can search up the second copy. As well as draw some cards, thanks to the Hateful Eidolon. Fires of Invention into Heliot, alright. So end of turn, I guess I don't mind sacking the Pilgrim right now, or I could wait and just sack the Goats. And see what's up, don't need another Strider. I guess I'll take my draw step. More Striders. Could still play the Celebrant, so if there is a Sweeper, at least a bunch of damage is getting dealt. A Rankle could make discards. Got a lot of options. I think I'm leaning... Attack, and then Sack the Pilgrim. Just to see what we draw. Without playing the Celebrant yet. Another Eidolon, don't need that. And then um, I guess we'll go Celebrant. Kaios goes from the Celebrant itself. Since we don't have any more to search up with the Helix Pilgrim. And then if there is a Sweeper, there would be a bunch of damage plus a follow up Rankle. Uh oh, we've assembled the combo. Yeah, the lack of instant speed removal definitely hurts in this type of matchup. I don't think there's a risk of uh, CGB running out of cards, even if we sack a bunch of stuff with the Cruel Celebrant in play. Alright, GG's.
Alright, so we got to see plenty of infinite and near infinite combo decks in action, so hope you enjoyed that. I also want to thank CGB for being part of this collaboration, and make sure to check out his perspective of the different duels as well. I'll put a link in the video description, and make sure to subscribe to his channel as well if you want to see more jank all week long. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.